So I witnessed something the other day for the very first time Dunbar did. I've never seen this behavior before. I didn't even know it existed. But Dunbar... Dunbar. I know we've talked about, uh, about him quite a bit here in the past videos, but he is a character. He is the dominant bull here. We do have two younger bulls. We're gonna talk about his interesting breeding behavior. Just fed him and we're just standing around. My, my wife is, is there, my mom. We're just sitting there talking, hanging out with Brooks. And <laughs> he is not messing around. Go get your woman. We are in breeding season. He's chasing his lady. So Dunbar right now is isolating another cow. This is Belle Star. She just had her first baby this year. She's one of our favorites. She's our feisty one. So he's courting her. I've talked to you a little bit about courting in a, in a video or two. Uh, so right now he's got her singled out. He's been with Peaches. And then he's also been with another cow called Quapaw. So I witnessed something the other day for the very first time Dunbar did. I've never seen this behavior before. I didn't even know it existed. But Dunbar, I fed him. And of course he makes his around and kicks all the others off of the troughs. And then he comes out in front of me. Well, there's a bison waller right in front of one of the uh, feed troughs. And so what Dunbar does is he kind of is actually right in front of me. I watched him roll in it for a little bit and just dust it off like normal. And then uh, a couple minutes later, he came back and then he actually peed on this bison waller. He peed on it and then... He rolled in it. Um, I've never seen that before. I saw saw his uh, his uh, his baby maker spread uh, spread his love or his scent. I don't know what you call it. Um, <laughs> spread it everywhere, and then he rolled in it. So um, I guess that's nature's uh, cologne. I don't know, attractant. It's fun to see um, what it takes to get him attracted or how he spreads his scent just like other animals do. And uh, I'm learning. I've never seen that behavior before of him actually peeing uh, on a bison waller and then rolling in it. Luckily, I just had my camera with me. I just fed him and got to see that. So pretty fun to watch if you can catch those scenes i can't spend all day with them which i'd love to especially during this time but then what was interesting after that was bell star the one i just was talking to you about bell star actually came by and she didn't pee on it, but she rolled in it. It was the craziest thing. I just watched Dunbar pee on this. He rolled in it, dusted, dusted in it, rolled, rolled in his your own urine. And then Bell Star came by. She smelt of it, and she rolled in it too as well.
and I've noticed that in that spot the past couple of days other other females have came by there and smelt of that they keep smelling around this and then they actually I haven't seen them roll into it but I've actually just seen them stop and actually smell it it kind of reminds me of a buck during rut the buck always will mark a tree rub a tree it's how you can tell how big the buck is which is always good to find good sign to where you need to put your deer stand or your deer blind but sometimes they they stink pretty bad that's because they're uh, their urine uh, they put their urine out on the ground and that's their mark and that's where they actually do a rub and they'll hit the trees they'll rub the trees with their antlers it's pretty interesting behavior so that's what it kind of reminds me of uh, to be honest with you Another typical behavior uh, that I've seen is the smell or the, uh, the, the grunling of the nose and uh, the sniffing of the air or the sniffing of a female. That's the typical uh, thing that I've seen since he was young. You even see these little calves do it. You even see the uh, females do it. They will wrinkle up that nose and they will smell of each other, kind of like a dog, you know how a dog introduces themselves is they they sniff each other's rear end i know it's it's crazy we've all probably seen it kind of the same thing really uh dunbar gets up behind the girls and that's his way of uh, of knowing who's in heat there's something crazy about these animals that uh, they notice that smell that certain scent that is being put out by these females and of course that draws him in He'll single that female out for three, four days. Could be a week. I haven't even seen him do it for a couple weeks. Maybe she's cycling or just hadn't really hit her heat yet. Um, but then he'll breed her. I haven't caught him actually breeding her. Kevin, my stepdad, has actually said he's he's seen him top of a couple of the females before. Here's our sweet favorite. Eleanor, I'm out of cubes. Hey girl. Here's the great thing about only having one dominant bull is our fences aren't torn up. We don't have a lot of, we won't have a lot of fighting. If you uh, watch any footage from Yellowstone or, or Custer and some of those big parks where there's lots of bison, you see those bulls fighting. And I know I posted something on my Facebook where um, this bull ran across the road and lifted up another bull. Now these bulls are probably about 2,000 pound bulls in, in Yellowstone. Picked him up and threw him on the other side of the road that is nothing but sheer strength and agility and power if that bull a dominant bull who obviously won his ladies over lifted that other bull up and threw him on the other side of the road and said not today sir these are my ladies and i'm gonna stick with them and uh, luckily we don't have to deal with that got a niche that's why you don't drive the truck out in the pasture just give me some milk. Come on, mom. This is uh, one of our young bulls. I really like the way this guy looks. This is Chaske, firstborn. He is our first calf ever born. Um, I noticed that Dunbar will run these calves off. They're not much competition, obviously, because they're so young, but he will run them off because he doesn't like them being around his females. But I really like this bull. He's a, he's a sharp looking bull, he's really long. I'm excited to see how he does, but he'll probably have to leave the herd eventually. And we can't have two adult bulls around.
So that's why we only have one bull. And also, I've heard that one bull can breed up to 25 females, cows or yearling heifers, up to 25. Now I think they have to be in really good health and he better be in some really good health and in good shape to be able to do that because that's a lot of work for one bull. Now that means you gotta have good grass too um, that comes with that for good health so that bull can actually breed that many females here he's only got seven remember this breeding season runs from july could even run all the way to october i think he's got a couple of these females bred but not all of them so he may just be in a quiet time right now he may be tired it's a lot of work for this guy if a lot of these females come in heat and he's got to stick with them he's got to defend everybody else off and then hopefully get them bred Breeding behavior can bring out some interesting characteristics for sure. If you're in love and, and you're trying to protect your woman, you gotta do what you gotta do. So if, if it takes Dunbar beating the crap out of everything and, and running the rest of a, the bison away from his, from his woman, hey, that's nature's way of doing it. Dunbar, just keep doing your thing, buddy. You're doing a good job. Just a couple other breeding facts. Once they're bred, those females carry a baby from about nine to 10 months. The length is what I like to use is, it's just about as long as a woman, as a, a woman's duration of carrying a baby. It takes a long time for these females to actually have a calf and then the calf actually grow up before you can sell it or raise it or keep that calf. So if Dunbar does his job, we could have seven females bred i don't know if it'll happen i think for sure we should at least have six